hit record. Hey everyone, welcome to the 14th weekly Team Relentless call. I'm so excited to see all of you on here and we have a bunch of new coaches and so I wanted to go over a few things before we get started. Um, there's been um, some stuff that's been brought to light within Diesel Nation, not just our team. And um, that is something that I wanted to really discuss with you because it's something that's very important and it's something that um, really affects our team, affects our network. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody who's new knows the protocol. So. We're a pretty big organization. When I started as a coach, there was about, I think, 30 or 40,000 coaches, and now we've hit the 400,000 mark. So I, with that being said, there's a lot of us. And I hear all the time, oh, you know, the market's saturated, which is not true because, the, you know, there's 300 million people in, in the United States. So obviously, we're not going to run out of people for working our business with integrity and doing it the right way. So I wanted to share with you that I know that a lot of us are – you know, in a small community uh, like myself, or I know if you're in Northern California, you're in a small community, and it's something that even in a big community like Miami, where Becky and Christina were, most of our team, Diesel Nation, was based out of Miami, and they were people that went to school together, went to college together, and were based in, you know, the same social circle. So this was something that was really drilled into my head when I first started because it wasn't a problem, but it could have been a problem in the Miami area. And this could be something in your area as your team grows. And it's something that has to be addressed. It is also something that is a violation of the policy and procedures um, code. And that can be found under the, um, the, under my business, my forms and documents. It's something that you want to be aware of. Because um, one thing is when in network marketing, people want to see network marketing companies fail. So they are watching us very closely and we have all worked so hard. Some of us coaches who've been here four, five, six, seven, eight years for what we have. We've worked hard for the financial freedom and there have been network marketing companies who have been shut down. Um, because they haven't followed the certain codes. So I will recite over and over and over again things that are um, part of the policy and procedure man manual, and it's something that is, even though we're a team, I'm not your boss, you are your own boss per se, it's something that you need to learn as well. But one part that we are really big on is ethics, and that is just something that, it, in all in all, if you don't like something to be done to you, you wouldn't wanna do it in return. And I believe in good karma, I believe in working your business with integrity. And so it's really important that when you start working with anybody and talking to anybody, that you always ask them, do you have a coach? Or are you working with a coach? I came across that people have actually lied to me or other people, so there are instances of that. But that is the first thing that you want to do whenever you start working with somebody. Once somebody says, yes, I do have a coach, then that's when you refer them back to their coach. When you actively pursue somebody, that's considered poaching. That's against the policy and procedures manual. And also, there, I believe in paying it forward and helping people, but it can be frustrating if you work really hard with somebody and then they belong to somebody else and then they order through them and they work with them. And it can be very frustrating. There are instances where people reach out to you and have said, I signed up bossing up the infomercial, you know, and never was contacted by my coach or I had a coach and they went inactive and they never contacted me. I want to switch to you. There are definitely those things where I think are, that are actually acceptable, but when you actively pursue somebody that is working with a coach or you don't ask ahead of time, or if you ask them to switch, that is unethical and it is against policy and procedures. So I want to make sure that everybody, especially the new coaches, know this is clear so that when you bring coaches onto your team, that you make that very clear to them because it's, we work really hard. And with Diesel Nation, with Team Relentless, and as a coach and all, we want to run our businesses with integrity, and we want to make sure that we uphold the, the reputation of coaches, and that's honesty. And there's so many people who don't build their business um, you know, with integrity, and I will say there's no longevity in this business, and there's really no good feeling in this business, and that's one thing that Christina Delgado, who if all of you don't know who she is, she's my coach's sister, she's part of the CAP, which is the Coach Advisory Board, you know, she posted something in one of our diamond groups the other day that if there's any poaching going on, they will be turned into compliance, and also that if you are going to do, there's an action that makes it where you can't look the other coach in the eye, then don't do it. Um, it's really important, so that was my little spiel. Also, um, 
move on to the next subject. Um, this month, for anybody who's going to Summit, if you've been to Summit, how did you like those long lines? I know Brandon and Stephanie went this last year, Danielle, um, long lines. So if you didn't know, now I'm going to tell you, this is the month to really, really, really push hard because I don't know if you know about the promotions, but there is a promotion. Not only can you get a um, apron, but you can also get a key to the core, and they're doing the, the special where basically you get – admittance into the core and you can bypass all the lines I will tell you that when you may say that doesn't matter now but when you get in the line and you see especially since the attendance of summit has doubled from last year you're gonna want that and so um, I wanted to share with you because I totally believe that you need guidance but I also don't want to um, I, I really don't want to tell you exactly how to do stuff, but I want to show with share with you in case you're a new coach and you aren't aware how to find the promotions. And these are things that everybody is definitely motivated by different things, but it's so cool. You may say this or that doesn't motivate me, but whenever you win something, it's a pretty cool feeling. So whenever you're in your coach online office, you can go to incentives and rewards and click on current promotions. Also, if you look over here in the coach breaking news, you're actually going to see the, um, it under the um, breaking news. Obviously, as time goes on, it'll get bumped to the bottom, but right here you can see April Success Club, and that's where it will give you all the details. So if you have any questions, if anything you hear on the National Wake Up Call, you hear us talking about in the team page, or you want to know what's going on, always check the breaking news. Always check the recognition because it's always cool to have something to go for. Obviously, you know you want to help as many people as possible. At least three people get started every month, but um, when you have extra incentives, it's pretty cool. A lot of times, I give some of the incentives um, away at, to my challengers and whatnot, but I wanted to let you know that, that was there. Um, and that was about it. So now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this call. And that is how to run a challenge group and really get your customers to the point where they stay loyal to the products. They stay loyal to you and that they really see success. This is one thing that Carl has shared over and over and over and over again this year is that we all can sell challenge packs, um, all the time. And if you don't see anybody with results or staying on as a customer or joining your team eventually, then at some point, kind of like I was saying in the beginning, we were talking about a different subject, but there's no longevity in the business. So the, the whole point is not only selling a challenge back to somebody, not only getting success club points, but to really help this person on their journey. All of you are here for a reason, and all of you are here because somebody inspired you, somebody gave you the opportunity to be a coach, and then you wanted to pay it forward. So as hard as it is for so many people for their, to wrap around their head around, you are that person to somebody else. Maybe you haven't been yet, but you are, and you have the ability to. So you want to do what Carl keeps focusing on is help people get results. It obviously, if you do that, they are going to talk about it. They are eventually going to become coaches. They are going to be a walking testimony that number one, our products work. Number two, that you really came through with exactly what you said you were going to do and that you're, you're building your reputation and that in this business, if you want to see longevity, reputation is really everything because one thing that I've learned is that we can talk all day long till we're blue in the face about the products. When I started as a coach, nobody even knew what Shakeology was. People laughed about it in the town I am in, but now it's a household name. So the thing is, everybody pretty much knows the product, so you're basically selling yourself to somebody. So you're wanting to make sure that when you're posting on social media and driving people crazy in their news feeds about your workouts, your Shakeology, your challenge groups and stuff, that whenever people finally have that aha moment and say, okay, I want you as my coach or I'm ready to join this challenge group because finances are right, that you deliver what you say you are going to deliver. And, and then for you and for me, it may be something different and that's something that um, we'll be talking about in future calls, but really you need to figure out why you're here as a coach and what it is that you're wanting to give to your challengers. And that usually has something to do with your why, why you became a coach, why you were drawn to your coach, why you, you know, decided to join a challenge group, why you pick your program, what Shakeology has done for you. But once you do that, you need to make sure that you're sharing that. But I see so many people on social media who share their journey, share their story. They have awesome results, awesome stories, you know, awesome things, but they're not really, they don't have a call to action. And so that's where the challenge group comes into play is you can tell people all day. So you're blue in the face about your results and you know, you can share results from people on our team 
but they want to you need to have something to invite them to because most people i think that all of you can agree are procrastinators and people usually don't do anything until the last minute right so if you just say oh i, I want to invite you to join my journey i want you to join me join me uh contact me let me know if you're interested you know people go through their head but they never really actually take the leap unless they're pushed so whenever you every month have a challenge group to invite somebody to that puts a little you know rush on a deadline so maybe the month of april is not you know the right time for them but if you have a challenge group that starts in may then it might be the right time for them so every month you need to have something to invite something somebody to because if not what are you inviting them to do they don't know and the biggest thing is that people don't know we all know what things but lingo is but make sure that when you're sharing stuff on social media or you're inviting people through email text in person via Facebook Messenger that you're actually sharing with them what they're actually being invited to because so many people I know myself when I became a coach was invited to you know, I bought P90X and my coach said can I put you in my challenge group and I was like well what is that what do I have to do well I, you know blah 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 and so I didn't know so just make sure that you when you're inviting somebody you put yourself in your in their shoes because you were there at one point in time a brand new coach not knowing what to do what a challenge group's like what to post you know you know what the rules are about confidentiality just make sure that you really put yourself in their shoes so that they understand but once you have a challenge group you invite people to this is where you build your business this is where you really further your relationship with these people this is where you see where your new coaches are going to be from this is where you can check in with them on a private you know more private intimate setting one thing that I want to tell you, and this is something that reminded me, I've been doing this for over four years, but I actually met a Korean adoptee when I was searching through the hashtags on Instagram, and then I found out that she likes German Shepherd, she drinks Shakeology, and she's a Korean adoptee. So it was pretty cool to talk to her. She just became a coach, and she started asking me all these questions, and she told me, she's like, I just ran my first free challenge group. She was like, and now I'm going to start my next challenge group that's a, you know, for paid customers, for challenge, people buy challenge packs of programs. And she was like, I'm just so scared that people are going to say no. So I totally forgot about how scary that was. I didn't actually start my, my first challenge group until April. I've been a coach since February. And I remember I just said open-ended in April because I was scared of rejection too. So if you're one of those people that's scared of starting a challenge group because you're afraid nobody's going to say yes, I'll let you know that this, that as a common fear, and that's why I like having these calls and really talking to people is because if you don't get on these calls, if you don't talk to other people, you might think you're the only person out there with that fear, but this is a normal fear. So I'll tell you that whenever I did this, it was like April something, and then nobody, nobody wanted to join me. Probably back in 2012 was because I was announcing a challenge group with P90X. Nobody really wanted to do P90X at the time. Um, now we have so many other programs that are so much easier to get started with. Well, then um, I kept extending it, extending it, extending it, and finally I got my first bite, and that was Melissa Bartow. And that's one thing that I told this new coach. I was like, don't give up. I said, my first challenge group, really didn't have a date on it and I only had one person respond to me and it was most of our though we've been friends since we were kids I was like but the, the most awesome thing is is that she's still here with me today she's still one of my rock star coaches she posted today that, that her and Tom just registered and you know for their track for summit that I realized that this will be our fourth summit that we've attended together and so to be able to ride out this crazy ride together because she she was the only person who invested in me um, really made a big difference because I will say she was really my first success story um, and the first person that really took off and ran with this business and honestly if that one person hadn't have taken a chance on me uh, I don't know if I'd be here and so many people get so hung up on numbers and so I know we talk about success club success club success club you know challenge packs you know ranks and all this stuff but I'll tell you the story when Melissa started she actually already owned the 90 X. How many of you would be like, Oh my God, you already own it. So I'm not going to get successful points, but you know, I was like, okay, cool. Well, let's just work together. Let's get this done. And then I finally talked her into Shakeology and she ordered it on a one time basis because she wasn't sure about it. And so put yourself in my shoes and how, how you could feel. And I've seen coaches who only get 
only get one customer, one challenge pack, and they get so hung up on the fact that they didn't get six, five success skill points that they give up on that one person. But regardless of all the, the factors that really were working against some of my goals in the month of April 2012, I gained Melissa. And because of that, I will say that our friendship that had been separated for miles and time got back on track. I finished P90X, I believe, because she was there with me. We learned the business together. We had the ups and downs. We were excited at pretty much the same pace. So, so my point being is, is when you have a challenge group and you only have one person, if you have just one person, that's better than zero. So make sure that you put your time into that person. And it, as frustrating as it can be, if you're you know trying to hit success club or you have a goal to advance in rank and you're trying to get coaches or whatever it is never forget that one person because that one life matters i know the impact that most has had on team relentless and still has i know the impact that this opportunity and uh, me being her coach has had on her so that is something that is so important so anyways <laughs> my first challenge group was just me and her so we really didn't have a challenge group opened up like many of you do now and so I've seen people say, well, if I only have one person, how do I run a challenge group? The great thing about it is that we work together as a team, so I run monthly challenge groups every month. So if you have one of those months where you just get one customer and you think, God, I don't want to open up a group or do a, a, you know, a challenge tracker um, challenge group with just one person, you can run it with somebody within the team or myself. So uh, remember, more than anything, the part of Team Relentless, Team Beachbody is you're not alone and you don't have to be alone. And as you can see, we work really a lot with other coaches outside of this team. You know, Danielle's one of them. We work well together. So you're, you're definitely not alone. So anyways, once you have the challenge group, like I said, this is where you build your relationships. I want to share with you some of my failures and mistakes so that you can see that everybody's human. Everybody has their ups and downs. When I, um, every year I've hit success club every month and I've concentrated on numbers because I think that all of us know that if you have number 10 in one month and 12 the next month and 13 the next month, you see progression. And so I've always looked at the end of the year of how many success club points I had. And I'm like, I'm going to beat that the next year. Well, I'll tell you that in the course of, you know, four years, you lose track of things. And so when I keep telling you to focus on people, I'm saying this because I stopped focusing on people and was just competing against myself, not against any other coach, but myself. And I lost track of the people and I was just focusing on success club, success club, success club, success club. Oh, you know, I'll get my success club points. And at the end of 2015, I didn't have a lot of success stories because, and I realized it was because I lost complete I just totally lost touch with what I was doing and I was focusing on numbers instead of people. So like I said, you'll see me talking about success club a lot and I'm not downplaying it, but you have to find the balance. So make sure that you do that whenever, um, what I was basically doing was saying, here's a challenge pack, get started. Let me know when you have it. But I didn't have any plan. And this is something that I've talked about with some of the coaches and hate to call you out, but like Brandon and Dawn, they're the people that like we we work well together. We talk, we're encouraging, but those two, I don't even have to check up on them. They just do their shit. They work out. They know what they are going to do. I don't even have to give them the encouragement. In fact, they really encourage me. So there's some people out there that don't need encouragement, but most of the people out there are not like that. So most of them are like me. Most of them are like, you know, everybody out there who's failed at some point and gets discouraged. So the biggest thing that you need to remember is that don't assume that anybody is going to just know exactly what to do or be ready to get started. Cause some of these people may have been watching you for six months, a year, two or three years to finally get the courage up to invest in themselves and to say yes to you. And then they get the box and they're like, Oh shit. And then especially if you're one of those coaches who's been rocking and rolling and kicking ass and have great results, it's intimidating. I've, I've told Dawn this, I've told Brandon this before that, you know, you guys are our inspiration. I told uh, Adam Brego this the other day, but it's really intimidating intimidating to the everyday person who's just getting started, especially somebody who may have started something over and over and over again and failed. Usually they failed at it because they didn't have support. Obviously the support is the, the big factor, but they don't know that until they get into a challenge group. So that's why it's important. But one thing that I learned is that I was just expecting people to get started and I would check in with them every once. So I put them in a challenge group and, and that, was, that was it. Then I would just post some mediocre stuff and hope that that was motivating because, you know, 
I had been doing this for so long, I knew what to do. Then I took a really big step back after a really bad 2015 and totally revamped everything I did in my challenge groups. And so that's one thing I wanted to share with you is take from me the mistakes that I made, the fact that 2015, I don't have any success stories to show for all of those successful points that I got. And I got a, like 200, I don't know, almost 300 successful points last year. But where is everybody now? So that that's my point. Um, what I have done now is because from listening to people and really going back and looking at the people that I was attracting and the, the goals that they had and the way that I was working with them, I was really took back and like thought instead of saying like, oh, I suck as a coach, you know, well, I looked at what, how can I change things there? And so what I have been doing with all of my people now is whenever I'm talking to them. The biggest thing is making them believe that they can do it. Most of them don't believe they can do it. They're just like, I'm going to take your word for it, um, but I don't think that I'm going to succeed. So it's your job to really believe in them and keep encouraging them so that eventually they believe that they can do it. But what I've been doing is telling everybody in the beginning, I, I, I had somebody that actually came over today to order a challenge pack that I've been working with for two years. She finally said yes. She came out here. And I told her, I said, I'm not trying to scare you. I said, but I want to set you up for success. I don't want to see you fail. I don't want you to feel like a failure. I want you to be here not only a year from now, but four years from now, five years from now. And I want to help you create a lifestyle. So when you tell people exactly what it is you want for them, it makes it very clear what your vision is and that they see that you're in it for the long haul. And so she was like, yeah, I said, you know, how many things have you tried that, that haven't worked? And she was like a lot. And I said, well, I don't want that to happen to you. I said, you think it's because you tried to change everything all at once? She's like, yeah. And I said, okay. I said, I've learned that through the years of being a coach is that so many people saw what we were doing and saw that we were all kicking ass and our team was kicking ass and the people that we were sharing their results were kicking ass and they thought oh my god and if anybody follows a coach who's good on social media they know what needs to be done you need to drink your shakeology every day you need to eat out of the little containers you need to work out you need to do this and this all the stuff that is definitely what's gonna you know destined you know whether you have success or not however I think we all know that, you know, there's that little picture out there that most people think success is like this, but when in reality, it's just a big squiggly line all over the place. So, so many people, they see what needs to be done. They see a lot of us who have mastered that, and then they try to do that all in the first week. And when they do that, you all know, you're like, I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to quit eating out. I'm going to stop eating fried food and work out every day. I'm going to figure out this container system. I'm going to figure out Shakeology. My God, I hope I like it. Or if not, that I figure out a recipe that I like. All that's very overwhelming. I, myself, I don't know how many of you, when you get overwhelmed, just don't do shit. So that's the everyday people. And I see that even with the coaches who've been with me from 2012, 13, 14, they feel that way. So I... I'm very honest. I said, I want to see you succeed. So what I've been telling everybody is like, I want you to just set one goal for the first month. And they're like, okay, what is it? I'm like, just to drink Shakeology for 30 days straight. And they're like, oh, I can do that. Cause I mean, that's pretty easy. I was like, so what I want you to do is to make sure that you let me know when you get your Shakeology. So I have actually come up with, I have a video and I also have a, like a little thing that I typed up on how to get prepared for, for your Shakeology to come. I'm going to share my screen with you. That way you can see what I'm talking about. And if anybody wants any, um, any of the verbiage, I will send it to you. Where is it? Uh, so what I do is I put them in my challenge group and I'm going to talk at the end about how I'm doing my challenge group, but under the file section, I always direct them to the, how to prepare Shakeology. It tells them what they need to get to um, be prepared. I tell them why. And um, I basically, I don't know if you can see it. I tell them to get the unsweetened vanilla um, or plain almond milk. I tell them because some people say, well, well, why not milk? So I definitely make sure that that is taken care of. And also I've heard nothing but bad stuff from people who drink their, um, or their Shakeology with a soap brand. So I always suggest this other brands. And then I tell them to drink all servings of seven consecutive days. Um, I tell them, you know, like the, basically the troubleshooting that if it's too thick, do this, if it's too powdery, do this. Um, and then I also have the, uh, an article that I wrote about what if I don't like it 
right at first. So those are the things that I do to get them started and make them prepared. The thing is, if you've been drinking Shakeology, you have found your your recipe. How many of you drink the same thing almost every day? At least I do. And if you've been drinking it for a long time, you can choke it down with lukewarm water if you want to. But most people can't when they're started. So you want to set them up for success. You want to make sure that they have their almond milk already, their their produce or whatever it is that they're going to add to it. So when their Shakeology comes, it doesn't just sit in a box or doesn't just sit on the counter. That they're ready to go. And then you're already telling them that, hey, you may not like it. It may be to this or that. But this is how you're going to change it. Because I actually have a customer, or he just signed up as a coach. He bought Shakeology um, at a garage sale across the street the other day um, for like $60. It was, it was literally, it was a box of packets. And he's like, why are you getting rid of this? I love it. Um, and it was like $67. And it was because she tried it one time and didn't like it. And then never touched it again. So the thing is, I, I just thought, gosh, I just wonder who that person's coach was or, you know, what happened. So I figured that, like, not every adult out there is willing to try things more than once and not every adult out there is willing to ask questions of their coach and not every adult out there is willing to just suck it up and drink good shit even if it tastes like shit. So you want to make sure that you don't assume that anybody's going to do this or that. So I figured to set them up for success – having this little letter. And if people don't like to read, because like I have ADD, I have a video. My suggestion is you could use my stuff, but they picked you as a coach. So do a video yourself. Do your own write-up. Um, if you're not comfortable, then that means you need to do it. So I do that. So I tell them, okay, so let me know when your Shakeology comes. As soon as their Shakeology comes, they let me know. Most of the time, they don't even let me know until, in, in, they don't let me know like a message. They post it in the group. And they say, oh, I like it because they've obviously done it the way that I've told them to do it. So there's my indication right there. I also make sure that whenever I um, have them in the group or get them started too, I have them, I'm going to close this out. I make sure that they agree to the challenge group house rules. This is another thing that they can read while they're getting started. This tells them what it's like so that they know that it's safe because how many of you thought about a challenge group oh my god you want me to post before pictures in front of people or the, are these people going to make fun of me i mean i don't know not everybody's the same but a lot of people think that so i have these rules and you can create whatever you want or you can copy and paste mine and add to or take away but i make sure that i tell them exactly what they're going to get in the in the group so that i put them in there that way they know the rules that they have to follow and that everybody else has to follow and then I have a, this video here. It's on uh, my YouTube channel. It's basically like a minute and a half video talking that has challengers or talking about how the challenge group helped them and what it's like and blah, blah, blah. So that gets them excited so they at least know exactly what to expect in the challenge group. So those are things that I've learned by trial and error that people's fears is that you need to head them off before they, you know, even feel it because – at least if you say it in the beginning, it's easier. They're already expecting it. They know how to get around it versus them being fearful and not saying it. They Trust me, people will not tell you their fears. And so I've just had to figure it out on my own. So those are the most important things is making sure that they feel comfortable in your challenge group and that they are ready to get started with their Shakeology. So I've had a lot of success lately with telling people, so here's the deal, just 30 days of Shakeology. Mike, and if you don't like it, if you don't find your combination that you like and you don't see any results or any changes in your diet, in your diet, your digestion, your energy, then you can return it for a full, you know, money back guarantee and so they're like okay and then I said in the meantime what I want you to do is and I I have in the file section the 21 day fix of approved foods it can be found in your coach online office and I told them circle the foods that you like okay because so many people will look at that list right and be like oh shit I've never heard of that I never heard of that oh I didn't like that because when I was like five my mom made me eat it and, uh, and then they all sudden start thinking about what they can't do and then they freak out like I can't do this oh my god I can't eat what Mindy eats I can't eat what Melissa eats I can't eat I can't do this or that and that you know so if you get them to focus on what they like then at least they have something to go with and they're focusing on the positive so that way they get prepared I send them my 21 day meal plan it just depends on where they're at sometimes if I have somebody that really is just really getting started, I send them my five-day meal plan because it's easier to break into a routine than the 21-day meal plan. But if they already are somebody that likes fruits and vegetables, then I'll send them my 21-day meal plan. 
I have that. So I tell them to start making changes to your diet. I said, you know, get familiar with, you know, what foods you like. Start, you know, it depends on the person. Again, this is where building relationships and listening to people really comes into play. But I ask, you know, a lot of questions. And so I get some people who are you know, ready to make a change. And you can tell the ones who are scared and the ones who are like, I need to make this change now. You, you ask them like, can you commit to trying one new food a week? And just remember that you want them to make the changes on their own. You want them to do it slowly where it's not overwhelming. You want it also to be fast enough that they actually can see the, the relevancy of why they need to do this and that they can see the results. So once I get that done, then I tell them, like, once you've started to make some changes, you're going to feel better. Once your Shakeology comes, you're going to feel even better. Your energy's going to come in. I said, and during that time, what I want you to do is, you know, I, I have a partner under the files tab too about how to access the Beachbody on Demand. You know, I tell them that if you want to get started at looking at the videos, you can log into your Beachbody on Demand or wait for your DVDs to come. But I tell them, I'm like, you know, the first three weeks of any program is a total mess. You don't know what to expect. You are looking at the screen. You feel frustrated. And I really set them up with like what to expect. And I always tell them, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm like, it's a total mess. And so when somebody's starting 21 Day Fix or 21 Day Fix Extreme, I said, I really want you to use the, you know, the, the first round as a practice round. The second one is where you're going to give it hell because you know what to expect. But I tell them, like, just for 30 days, drink Shakeology, check out the workouts, become familiar. Because at least if you've watched them, then you know the moves, you know the, the language, you know what you're getting into. Because it's so scary when you pop that first disc in. Because I'm telling you, I had cardio three the other day, and I procrastinated for two days because I was scared to death because I didn't know what to to expect. So I, I can totally understand how somebody feels. So if they watch the videos, they feel great. And, and when I tell people to do that, guess what? They actually start the program because once they get it started, they're like, oh, this isn't that bad. And I always tell them, if you can only do five minutes, that's great. The next day do 10 minutes or whatever, but set them up so that they know that because so many people I've noticed, they start a program and they're like, I can't keep up with autumn. I can't keep up with autumn. I can't, I I, I thought I was going to die. I can never do this. And so I always make sure that I tell people, don't judge your ability or your body's ability off of the first day or even the first three weeks. So these are the things that for me is working with my people is that they're setting really reasonable, attainable goals with the right deadline. And they're actually, you know, like I told the girl today, I'm like, if, you know, you, I'm like, you will probably do more than just do the 30 days of Shakeology. When you do that, I'm like, you're going to feel great. But if at the very least, all you do is get your Shakeology in those 30 days, you still accomplish something. I said, in goal setting is very important. And whenever you do reach a goal, I was like, it's addictive. I said, you know, have you ever done something and, and feel accomplished and are, want to do more? And she's like, yeah. So these are the things that you want to do is set them up for success and not failure. And it's easy when you've been on this journey and you're in a pattern to forget what it was like to get started. So I want to make sure that no matter what, whether we're talking about coaching um, as running a business or coaching people at helping them get started on their journey, always remember what it was like when you got started because you will be able to have more insight in how they feel. And that's one thing that really is the pinnacle of your success in this business is not only consistency, but empathy. You have to be em empathetic and understand how that person feels. And I guarantee you probably felt that way at some point in time. And it's so easy to forget it as time goes by and as you feel good and as you feel like a badass because you can do so much, it's so easy to forget that. So make sure that you do that. So anyways, once that's done, I have a, a uh, verbiage that I posted in the team relentless where I check in with them at three weeks and I always set a reminder and so I let them know hey your shakeology is going to ship you know did you want to save it as a disc save a discount for the next month or blah blah blah, blah. and I, I will say that in the last three months me doing exactly the same thing with everybody the same verbiage the same material the same uh you know uh like the challenge group, everything that everything is available to them, the same. There's a, a system there that I've had 100% retention. People haven't canceled, and I would say about 80% of the people are signing up as discount coaches at least. So that means, in my opinion, even if they're not working the business right away, that means that I did exactly what I set out to do is to create a lifestyle. So who knows if they're going to stay on – home direct who knows they're staying on as a coach forever but if they make that commitment to sign up as a discount coach then they're actually seeing 
long term, a little bit long term vision. There is a, a statistic that people stay at home direct for 4.5 months, Carl said, or 4.4 months or something like that. So at least they, they have some long term vision. So make sure that. Number one, you're setting realistic goals for yourself and realistic goals for the people and that you're communicating with them what you want to give to them because in the end, everybody wants to know what they're going to get out of it. They don't give a shit what you're going to get out of it. They don't care. They don't know and they don't care about successful points. They don't, you know, most people think you're just trying to make money off of them and so you want to make sure that you state your intentions of what you want to do with them and that you're going to be there for them. That doesn't mean you have to be at their disposal 24-7 and be at their beck and call because trust me, it's impossible as your business grows. But be there for them in the sense that you check in with them once or twice because I've had so many coaches be like, oh my God, you know, my, my challenger or my coach has like five bags on their on their you know, uh, countertop and then they put it on hold, it affects rank or they, people return it and it affects commission. So make sure that when you're checking up with people and you have the open line of communication and letting them know that failures are really not failures and that it's okay to come to you, then you can have a better line of communication. If you just set them off and be like, I hope it works out well, let me know. Um, you know, if you have any questions, people won't let you know if they have any questions. Coaches in our own team won't ask questions in Team Relentless because I don't know. They're scared of what people will think. They'll ask in private messages. So make sure that you don't assume that they're going to open up to you and make sure that, like I said, you cover all the bases in the beginning about the failure so they know that it's normal. They know that it's normal. You know, um, like I said, I share my failures about the fact that like I have all these successful points in 2015 and no success stories out of there. I, I want all of you to know that it's normal. I want you all to know that my first challenge group, I only had one respondent person didn't get successful points off of them, but I know how it turned out. So just make sure that you are making it very clear. The last thing I'm going to share before we end the call or, and I open up to questions is I want you guys to be um, aware of what I am switching everything over to in. Um, on May 1st, and I suggest you do the same thing. If you go to Frequent Ask Questions, this is the best way to find it. I know there's other places, but for me it's easier to find it. Um, and you type in the Beachbody Challenge Tracker app, how many of you know about that? I post about it on Team Relentless, it's been on the National Wake Up Call, it's been in the Coach Online Office. If you don't know about it, slowly we're gonna get there. Um, this is, right here, the challenge tracker portal. You can either type any question you have about anything, about Shakeology or business related or products in here and you can find it and that's why I always tell everyone look there first. My challenge tracker coach portal, this is a app that you can use from now on for challenge groups. It's been out for a while. Um, I have been one of those people who's been resistant to try it. Um, and it really set in stone whenever I had my um, call with corporate that we do weekly. And Brittany Adamson, who's my corporate contact, said, oh, is, you know, are you guys using the Challenge Tracker app? And all of us were like, no, not really. And then she was like, I just encourage you to do this. Um, and she explained that Melanie Mitro, who everybody knows is the top coach, two years in a row, she's like, as soon as it came out, she completely switched over to this. And I thought, Huh, and that is why she is the number one top coach because she does it without question. She trusts and believes 100% in Beachbody and this app literally was has been in the works and last year the elite coaches uh, were part of the test group and what I loved about it is that we gave feedback to the corporate about the app and they were supposed to launch this app in January but they actually pushed the date back because they didn't have all the bugs fixed. So what I want to, why I shared that is the fact that this app was really created for coaches and for customers, for us to be successful, for us to really be able to help our customer and to be able to, you know, they didn't want to release it and then have there be issues because I think we all know it's kind of like that person that drank the one thing of psychology never tried it again. That a lot of people, if they had a bad experience the first time, they probably wouldn't go in with it. So I really appreciate the fact that they made sure that they got most of the bugs out and did all the, the things that they could to make this the best um, uh, available thing to everybody to start off with. So th the great thing about it is like, I, like I'm not going to go completely through this because I believe that you are your own boss. You are your CEO of your own business. So I'm going to show you how to get there and where to find it, but it's really up to you to learn it. Um, but this is where you can find all the information here for the coach portal, how to download the app. If you have an iPhone, you can go to the app store and you can find the um, Beachbody Challenge Tracker 
app. Um, don't get it confused with the Beach Body on Demand. But this is basically going to be your hub to be able to run challenge groups. If there's also videos, um, if you look, I'm gonna show you one last thing. There's videos in the video library that tell you exactly how to use these. Uh, where is that? Uh, if you click under video library English, there's a tutorial on how to use the portal, which is for the coaches side, and the challenge tracker app for um, the for to see like how customers will use it. Um, so it's right here, my challenge tracker coach portal tutorial, my challenge tracker app tutorial. So all this is here, like literally if people say that they can't figure this out, literally corporate has taken the guesswork out of everything. They literally show you step by step. And what I love about this portal is you can go in and basically you don't have to deal with Facebook. Like I seriously, I'm going to scream if I am in one more Facebook group. And I know that I am responsible for putting some of you in a lot of groups. So I apologize. I hate them just as much, but this is a way to do it. And you know how many people don't have Facebook. And for me, it's been great because I've been connecting with a lot of um, my customer leads at success club leads. Some of them are kind of leery about, you know, contacting you on Facebook. And some of them, most of them don't have Facebook. So this is a great way to do this. And plus, like for me, if I could, one of the, the things that I've been trying to do is make sure I get my power hour done before anything, first thing in the morning. Well, if your power hour is number one, checking into your challenge group, that needs to be the first place you check into. It's so easy to get lost and distracted with messages and notifications. And like, if you are like me and have ADD, it's so easy to be, have like 50 windows open and go here and there, like to have this portal where you just go there that is not connected to Facebook and that everything is like, has to be zeroed in on that is amazing. Plus on top of that, I have done um, challenge contests every you know week or month in groups to get people really to stay on top of it. And then that too is where you see where your competitive people are. And that's where you see where your coaches are. Like I saw Don and Brandy back is in um, December and, or November and December. They like ruled every contest because they were like on track. They were, you know, posting publicly. And I was like, that's where you spot your coaches. But I'll tell you when these groups get so big on Facebook and you have to go back and keep track of who posted what it's so frustrating. The great thing about this, this, uh, the portal is you have people where they have to check in with, they drink their shakeology, they worked out, they did this or that. And then it's all categorized. So you don't have to go through and figure out, count it up or have them count it up. It's all there for you. There's, um, uh, the challenge group, uh, what's the word? Uh, I don't know where, where there's the things in there that basically you don't even have to like think of what to say. What does I call it? The challenge group guide, guide, sorry, challenge group guide, where basically you can copy and paste and put that in there. There's ways that if you are, people aren't posting in there that you can email them and go straight to their email. This is literally set up for every coach who's ran a challenge group, bitches and complaints have are addressed through this and there's a way around it. And again, you can lead a horse to water and, and not everyone's going to drink. So there are going to be people even that, that don't want to use this app in conjunction with your challenge group. There's going to be people who you will sign up and be part of the, the app you know, challenge group and not do anything. And that's really, you know, if you're doing your best, that's it. That's all you can do. But I highly recommend that you switch everything over to that. And so what I'm doing is on May 1st, I'm starting all over from there. All my challenge groups are going to be ran from there. And so I suggest that, you know, from what everything I've seen, the most successful coaches are the ones that do exactly what corporate says because it works. Because anything that corporate has rolled out for us has always been based off of the feedback and what they've learned from coaches. Um, so that's all I have to say. Um, oh, lastly, um, I have been trying to get in a system. Like I said, I have a system for my challenge challengers. Now that I see them working, I have a plan for a system of running a challenge group, you know, starting in May and from here on forward using the app, but I've actually set up a calendar so that it's consistent because we, the, Call that I'm doing not this next week, but the week afterwards about branding yourself. I've been working with a branding consultant and she was talking about marketing. And I posted something that she said the other day that people only seem to market themselves or, you know, I don't remember what the saying was, but basically whenever they need the money. And so the best thing to do is have a consistent uh, way of marketing yourself and something that is always systematic. And for me, some days whenever it was like, oh, I'm running out of people, uh, I'll run a free challenge group out of nowhere. And there was no plan. And it was true. It was like, I was like, oh crap, the list of people on my follow-ups and um, who I want to invite are getting slim. And so if you have a constant stream and system of the way you do stuff you're, and you're, you're, 
running your business with integrity, you're going to find people. So I set up a system that the first Monday of the month, I'm going to do a five, five or seven, like basically five day clean eating, but it's going to be seven days where you help people get prepped beforehand. And then I'm going to do a coach opportunity call on the first Monday or the second Monday. And then a five day coach sneak peek on the third Monday. And then I have a plan to do this online party and I'm hoping that other coaches will get involved with me. It's something that Melanie Mitchell did, but it's, you know, prizes and it's building excitement, but that would be on um, the fourth uh, Monday of the, uh, of the month and then um, run a free challenge group on either the fourth or the fifth uh, Monday, like May, there's five Mondays, but basically you always want to have a system so that it's always reliable. And then that way too, I figured that some of the new coaches who don't have, you know, aren't confident about doing their coach opportunity calls or sneak peeks, so they don't have the content for their sneak peek. Then if I always have a revolving system there, then all of you can invite people to that because you know it's going to be consistent because I know I haven't been consistent. And I hope that my consistency will rub off on you and then eventually you'll do it and then your coaches will be consistent. So um, I'm going to open it up to questions. I know I just delivered a lot and I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just me. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, I'm going to read the chat. See, if you have a question, unmute yourself and just talk. Uh, Dana, and Dana said Alina and her just started using it. How is that going, Dana? Um, we just started. I actually have a question about um, challenge groups, like the free groups. Um, on the Challenge Tracker app, they don't have availability for you to track uh, your free challenges. Um, so would that just be putting them in a free Facebook group? Yeah, I would do the Facebook group, you know, because a lot of times I try to get my free challengers to sign up for a free, you know, membership. And I think that that's the best thing to do to make sure that they have invested in you by signing up. But there's some people you could just tell in the beginning when they're really leery about working with you that they don't want to, they're like, why are you wanting me to sign up with stuff? So I will put, put them in a group um, and just work with them privately there. And then once they feel more comfortable, then move them to there. I saw that Amanda said that some people wouldn't um, uh, install the tra tracker. And, and that's kind of what I was saying is that some people just won't do it. And you know, I, I that's something that I guess in the beginning, what I was saying about setting them up for success is making sure that you're telling them that, you know, this is a, the best way for us to stay in touch. Uh, you're going to get, you know, I don't know, support, encouragement, whatever it is that you can tell that they need. And again, if they don't want to sign up for it, that's fine. But the biggest thing is support is the biggest thing of why people succeed with us. Um, and just really, really focusing on that. Uh, oh, some people can't know it because of space on their phone. Hey, Mindy, I got a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you have, like, after you finish your particular challenge groups, I'm, I'm guessing that you do 20, I do 21 day fix groups just because they're easy to, you know, um, they're easy to run every month. But um, is that, I'm assuming that's what you're doing as well, right? Is say like a 21 day fix group? Basically, I, I've learned through trial and error before I would do, you know, a 21 day fix group. And then I started another one and, you know, it, it all started whenever Robin can remember when we started Pio, there was like five Pio groups started like on, uh, on June uh, 7th, June 14th, June 21st. And it got crazy. And then I was trying to manage it. And then obviously the, the group that just started was always the most active because people were all gung ho and then people would get lost. So what I started doing in 2015 and I stuck with it is that every month I open up one challenge group and then I, uh, it's for everybody, whether you're a free, uh, a free customer that's just basically watching to get a feel for it, whether you are an old customer that's restarting 21 day fix or you're a new customer starting size or whatever, we all work together. And I always like this one in April. I mean, we have people that are like, I don't know, 10 or 12 people are doing 22 minute hardcore, a bunch of people who are doing, you know, size and a few people doing pilots all over the place. Um, so I really, for me, it was easier just to do one group. And the best thing for me is what I would say was this month, we, our group has stayed really active and Don can attest to this. So we decided not to do it. But in the previous month, I'd be like, hey, this group's ending and I'm going to be closing this a couple days after. It, it, like, I would say, hey, this group is closing, you know, on May, like, 5th. Make sure that you request to join this new group. And I would open up this new group 
at the end of like this month and put people in that way you didn't have the people who just had went mute and just all on off track and there's nothing you could do to revive them just sitting in there and so basically people had to request to be in there and you didn't just add them in there because I found too that when people would be like holy shit there's 60 people in here they wouldn't post even if you told them that it's you know a, a supportive group blah 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 so it's easier to just that was a way to get rid of the stragglers and I would always tell them you're always free to come back because there were some people who literally like there was teachers who were like we can't we'll participate in this group whenever it's you know we have time but this next month we're going to be MIA and off the track so that that's the way I was running it now with the whole challenge checker app I don't know I'm gonna actually like I said, I'm starting in May 1st and that's all I'm doing, but it's going to be definitely um, a complete, like just learn as I go. And for me, I forgot to say that the May 1st one that I'm doing, I'm really announcing it as a test group for people um, and asking them to sign up for a 30 day free trial club membership. So I'll add my people in there who are doing a program because obviously you want people in there who are, are further ahead because number one, um, People like Dawn have been doing this forever. She loves the support and accountability, and also she's super supportive and it helps answer questions and keeps the group alive. So I want her to be in there too. But having the the thirty day trial thing is a good way to get people to be like, hey, you know, I'll sign up and get something for free. And then I'm also saying like, hey, we're going to give gifts, for, you know, out so that number one they'll do their program, and also it's kind of like a thank you because it's going to be a cluster. <laughs> that first month of running an app, like I know, it's just gonna be like the, what the fuck. So um, that that might be something you guys do, where you're like, hey, this is a test group. You're my guinea pigs, and um, I'm like a mad scientist. So that's my plan. Yeah, I I was wondering like because how many challenge groups? What for me personally, what the only the only and you might like cringe at this, but the only thing that I do is if there's a new program that comes out, I put. Um, I'll do like a test group for, for that. I might do one or two depending on how well it does, you know, but after that, then I'll close that group up and I add them to what I call like an overflow group. And I have uh, hundreds of people in that particular group. Sometimes people get lost, but you know, I mean, that's just, I guess the nature of the beast. I don't, you know, I just uh, was wondering like how long are you actually keeping these groups open and do you have like an overflow group yourself where you just, Put people in there because all of my my team is in there and so everybody's encouraging everyone and everybody's in there and so it kind of runs itself kind of I mean so I don't have to be the go-to person all the time for me I found it easier just to close the group down and then I'd have my assistant go in and delete everybody and delete me out so I wasn't in a bunch of groups and then so it didn't keep getting a lot bigger I, I have like what I guess you would call an overflow group it's the very first group I started the day I became a coach there's like 600 people in there nobody posts anything in there there's one dude in there that he's not even on my team but he requested to be in there I, I put him in there he when I check in there he posts like it's really like you, you know I I don't know like I it's there I can't don't have the heart to close it but like nobody's doing anything um, for me it's easier just to have a new group that starts up However, like I said, I don't really know exactly how this is going to go with the new challenge tracker app because, you know, I've done the tutorial, I have a plan, but I really don't know, like, I think, because you have to keep restarting one, so it's, it, it's going to be a mess. How are you going to move your people? See, that was my biggest concern. How are you going to move your people, like, all of your people, how are you going to pick and choose who's going to, the, to be in the, the new group? And uh, um, Angie just said that the app closes on the last day. That's good. Um, well, I, I'm going to have my, or, or Angie just said in the chat that the, whenever you have the X amount of days of your challenge, it act automatically closes. Um, this, I don't know. It's going to be so, oh yeah, I saw that too. That Brandon said, you can't change the start date, so you need to make sure. It's one of those things, I'm going to have my assistant email out all of my customers, letting them know about the group that starts on May 1st. And then, you know, on the last day, I'm going to already have a group opened up for, you know, the next month that they can come to. That's in theory. But like I said, I haven't ran one yet. And like with anything, I think there's going to be a lot of bugs. And like I said, that's why I'm doing a test group where like there's going to be prizes. And I, you know, um, I want people to just like, I don't know, sign up for the experiment. <laughs> and Angie said, so add extra days in the beginning and extra at the end if you need to tell everyone how they did. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's why I love like having people share stuff like this. Um, uh, does anybody have any other questions? I have a question. Who's, who's talking? Can you raise your hand? I just. 
Oh, hey. Hey. Okay, so me and Veronica just started a challenge group. It's a clean eating group. So is it too late to incorporate the challenge tracker app, or do I have to wait till the next group? I would, since we already started, I would wait till the next one and start announcing that just because it would probably be confusing to your new free customers because, you know, you think the free customers is brand new and then if you're like having them switch gears midway, it, it could be kind of confusing. That's just my thought. No, that's good. Bye. Um, Oh, th this has nothing to do with what we were talking about, but uh, like I was saying, we have these um, weekly calls with corporate that we do. Brittany Adamson actually has bronchitis, so she was not on the call today, so Doug Moss, um, who's over the West Regions, he led it today, and um, we didn't really have a topic, but he was talking about how he, he, he works with the top 10. Um, he had just gotten off the call recently with the top 10, and they were talking about different things, and so we were just running things back and forth about how you know, we invite and whatnot. And the biggest thing is of the three, or now four vital behaviors, the most important thing is inviting. And that seems to be where people get really hung up on is inviting, but you want to make sure that you're just constantly building conversations with people, constantly um, interacting with them so that whenever you're posting anything about your journey or your challenge groups or, you know, something that you're adding value on Facebook, that they're actually seeing it because of the Facebook al algorithm that if you're not interacting with people, then you're not going to show up in their news feed. They're not going to show up in your news feed. And if you'll notice, you can do an experiment that if you start commenting on certain people's pictures, their pictures are going to start showing up in your feed. If you start commenting on a lot of their posts, their posts are going to start showing up in your feed. So the thing is, if you're only posting, 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 and I know this because I've watched my, my, my interaction go down because I've only been doing really tied to messages. So I've had to go back and redo things is that Make sure that you're commenting on people's stuff, not just private messaging them. But Lauren Majewski, she's actually going to be on the May 17th call. She's here in Austin. Um, I think she was a top 10 coach at one point. I don't know. She was talking about saying that she's trained her team. And so I wanted to share this with you is that they do a comment, compliment, and question. So, you know, the best thing to do is to reach out to three people a day um, and be like, hey, what's up? comment on their stuff. You also want to invite three people to your challenge group. But if you're not talking to people, you know, normally, then it's kind of hard to invite them to something if you haven't said shit to them. So her thing is, do they call it a CCQ, that if you comment on one of their pictures or their posts you know, on Instagram or Facebook, you send them a compliment like, hey, your hair looks great. You're, or there's somebody that had a cool ass dog today. I'm like, your dog, that's a beautiful dog. What is it? And then a question. So like that was the the compliment and the question. I wasn't really complimenting them, but I was like, that's a badass dog, what is it? So those are the things that it causes them to see, you know, you're interacting with them and that goes back and forth. So that's helping you learn how to build relationships is a way for you to learn about them because it's, again, it's hard to invite somebody to a challenge group or to join your team when you know nothing about them and nothing about their needs. Because like I said, everybody ha coaching fills different voids in people's lives. So make sure... Uh, Robin said all three yeah to the same person yes and so you know if you're starting off inviting and it's kind of scary or you're not you know you don't have tons of time on fa Facebook or, or for social media do one a day or whatever set some goal that you do the CCQ X amount of people a day or a week whatever it is and like I said I'm not gonna give you a number but we suggest that you invite three people a day but if you haven't been inviting and you haven't been working the business or you're just gonna start working the business the best thing is to do the CCQ for an amount of time so that you start, you know, showing up in people's newsfeed. And I'll give you an example. I have somebody that I've been working with forever, and I've been telling her, I'm like, you can do this, you can do this. And finally, she's like, I know I can do this. I believe I can do this. And she's like, I helped her get a fund set up because she didn't believe she could do it. So she didn't ever save the money. Now she believes she can do it. We set up a fund so she saves, you know, X amount of money per week or paycheck. And so I told her, my suggestion for you now is, and this is, again, setting people up for success. I'm like, be intentional with your social media. She's like, what does that mean? I said, so you don't want to just pop up on social media, like, I'm a coach. Check it out. Check my Shakeology out. Because I did that. Like, you know, I, I mean, I posted a lot because I just, that's just who I am. But you see coaches out there who have never said shit, then they become a coach. And like every other picture is them kissing their Shakeology or them flexing. And then it's like, it drives people crazy because they're like, where did you come from? I never saw you. Now you're like inundating my newsfeed. I did it. So I told her like, start making your presence on social media be heard. Make sure that you're adding value. She's like, so what do I do? I said, post positive things, share stuff about your family. I was like, the goal in social media and us as coaches is you want 
people to fall in love with you. You want people to fall in love with you. There's no way to do that unless you talk about your life in some fashion or form. And so then she was like, okay, so she's been doing that. And then I talked to her right before the call. She's like, I, I actually, this is helping me out so much. She's like, I feel so more positive. I said, great. You're setting yourself up for success. So whenever it is a month, two months, six months down the road, when you sign up as a coach, people were already seeing you making the shift, making the change, being positive, being somebody's page you want to see. Because the thing is, if they've never seen you pop up in your newsfeed, then all of a sudden they see annoying ass stuff in their newsfeed. They're going to unfollow you, block you, delete you. But at least if they've been seeing you and they're seeing that, hey, this person's fun, they're interesting, they're positive, I want to go to their page. Then all of a sudden they start seeing fitness and they share their story. Then that's great. And then I told, you know, for her sake, it was getting her into a routine. So this applies to people who are already coaches now that make sure that you go slowly and you know, just like I said about somebody starting with a challenge group, there's things that you need to do, but don't try to do it all at once because it's not going to stick and it's not going to seem genuine. Um, but make sure that you're doing this and just step out of your comfort zone. I have been inviting people, just cold invites, but people that I've been talking to and I reached out to somebody that I found on Facebook um, probably about three months ago and we talked and I knew he was a veteran and I just bit the bullet because I actually will be honest I suck at inviting people people always come to me because I share so I've had to get out of my comfort zone so the last um, week I have been actually inviting people and I've gotten a lot of no's and I've got a lot of not now's but I and I've gotten a couple yeses but the one guy said that he was like you know he was like I'm really interested. He's like, you know, and I told him we had a vets program. He was like, I've had all these surgeries. He was like, I am at the heaviest I've ever been. I used to be athletic. I am so depressed. And so I thought, geez, I didn't know that about him. You know, he see, he, probably, he may or may not see my stuff in the news feed about my whatever, but here I give him, you know, the ability to join my, you know, challenge group on May 1st and the, the challenge tracker app. And I told him, you're the first person that came to my mind. And, and he really was, even though there was five other people that came to my mind too, I was not lying. He was the first person that came to my mind. And had I not reached out to him, would I have ever known he had all those surgeries? Would I know that he was at his heaviest? Would I have known that he was depressed? You know, and he too could have said no to me. And it may not pan out that he's ready to jump on May 1st. However, he knows that I care about him. He knows what I have to offer. And I know a little bit about him. So this is the thing is, it's so scary to invite. I know it. I know, I know it's scary. If you have like rejection issues and abandonment issues like me, I know how scary it is. Trust me. But when you see what you have as a gift, it's so much easier to invite. So anyways, this call is a lot longer than normal, but uh, I hope that you got some good content out of my rambling. And, um, next week is Jenny Palumbo who went from Emerald to five star elite coach this last year so hopefully you'll get good content of her um if you wanted to have any of the stuff that i said i posted in my challenge group files to use let me know um i've been using a new challenge power hour challenge or power hour app tracker that's been working for me if you want that let me know i'll post in the group so have a good night thank you everybody for staying awake i will post the recording whenever it uploads my youtube